Today we're going to be thinking about how to have a gospel-centred Sunday school. Well, have you ever thought, what is our aim in children's ministry? As we went with the children week by week, what are we trying to do? That's a question many teachers never ask. What happens in many Sunday schools is that we do what has always been done. So whatever the Sunday school is like when we join as a teacher, that's what we continue doing. Or perhaps we remember back to what we did as children and then we try to replicate that as teachers. And it might be good or it might be bad. It just depends on how biblical it was in the first place. In this video, we're going to think about what we should do in Sunday school, how to have a gospel-centred Sunday school. Well, let's begin first with what we must not do. As I look around many Sunday schools in Malaysia, I see one of these four models. Uh, the first we would call daycare. According to this, parents see their children as a distraction in the service, and so they send them out to Sunday school for daycare so that the parents can focus on real church. Perhaps they give them some colouring in to keep them occupied. But the problem with this philosophy is that children are a part of the church and they need to be discipled just as much as their parents do. Well, the second model is fun and games. Because in general, if children have nothing to do, they're going to misbehave and they're not going to want to come to church. So some Sunday schools will try and make it as fun as possible. They'll make it like that so that their children will love being at church, that they'll invite their friends to church as well. But they don't really teach God's word. It's, it's all about fun rather than discipleship. And that won't keep children in church in the long term. They'll find more fun things elsewhere. Well, the third model, is, which is very common, is moral instruction. Now, the good thing about this model is that there's an attempt to teach the Bible. The problem is with what is taught. See, children are simply taught to be good people, to, to follow the Ten Commandments, to obey their parents, to do their homework, to not lie or steal. Now, as children grow up under that kind of teaching, one of two things usually happens. Firstly, they might actually succeed at keeping all the rules. And they'll think to themselves as they grow up, well, church is a place to learn to be a good person. And I'm already a good person, so I don't need to go to church. The second and more likely option is that they won't keep the rules. Now, most children rebel in all kinds of ways as they grow up. And so they might think to themselves, look, church is all about learning to be good. And I'm not good. I don't belong at church. Either way, there's a danger that under this kind of teaching, they'll end up leaving the church. See, the problem is that Christianity is not about being a good person. The whole reason that Jesus came and, and, and died for us on the cross is that we are not good people. We are sinners who have failed to live God's way. So the gospel is all about what God has done, not about what we do. Of course, we must respond to the gospel by living a good life. But it's salvation first. It's good works second. Well, the fourth model that I often encounter is that of Bible stories. And the stories that are the most popular are, are, are the fun ones. David and Goliath, Daniel and the lion's den, Noah and the ark. They all feature animals and children, did you realise? Well, we pick those stories because we think they're interesting, that children will enjoy them. But the problem is, if we only ever tell Bible stories, then our children will grow up thinking that all these stories are just fairy tales. And they'll think they've got nothing to do with Jesus, and they've got nothing to do with me. And when they grow up, once again, there will be a danger that they will leave the church. See, we need to explain the story of the Bible, not just Bible stories. We need to show how the Bible fits together as one big story that's, that's centred on Christ and the gospel. In other words, we need to have a gospel-centred Sunday school. Now, Paul reminds us of the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15. We read these words. 
I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. So the gospel message is a message that we hear and believe and then pass on. We don't change it. It's a gospel that saves us. But it only saves us if we hold fast to it. See, if we don't hold fast to the gospel, it doesn't matter whether our parents were Christians or we went to Sunday school as children or whether we gave money to church or served in a ministry or any of these things. All good things. But if we don't hold fast to the gospel, then it's all in vain. We won't be saved. Well, Paul goes on in verse 3, I delivered you as of first importance what I also received. See, this is, the, this is the number one priority in children's ministry. This is what it's all about. We want children to receive and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then we're told what it is in verse 3, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, that he appeared to Kephas, and then to the twelve, and then to more than 500 brothers at one time. See, the gospel is the good news that Christ died as our saviour and was raised as our king. It's all about who Jesus is and what Jesus has done. Who is Jesus? He's our saviour and king. What has he done? He has died and been raised. And notice that that is the message of the whole Bible. We're told in verse 3, he died in accordance with the scriptures. And in verse 4, he was raised in accordance with the scriptures. See, the whole of the Bible is about Jesus and the gospel. The Old Testament scriptures look forward to the time when God would send his son to save and rule his people. And then Jesus comes to fulfill all those promises. And so whether we're teaching from Daniel in the lion's den, Noah in the ark, David and Goliath, that's what they're all about. They're all about Jesus. They're all about the gospel. Jesus tells us the same thing in Luke 24. He says this in verse 25. O foolish ones and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. You see, we need to see children's ministry as discipleship. Our goal is to bring every child in our care into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ as their saviour and as their king. And then we, the way that we do that is by teaching Christ and the gospel from all of the scriptures. See, the measure of success in children's ministry is not how big the ministry is, or not how much fun is had, or, or even how well the children behave. They're all good things. The measure of success in children's ministry is whether my children understand the gospel and whether the Spirit works through the gospel to bring them to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, we need to have a gospel-centred Sunday school. Well, if you're looking for materials that are gospel-centred, I'd highly recommend the Gospel Project by Lifeway. You can get all the materials online if you Google it. And if you're looking for kids' Bibles that will help you to, to teach the gospel in all the scriptures, here's two that you could check out. Uh, there's the Big Picture Story Bible by, by David Helm. Great Bible. Uh, and then there's the Beginner's Gospel Story Bible by Jared Kennedy. Another great Bible uh, to read, to learn the gospel with your kids. So what are we aiming to do? as we engage in children's ministry, it's not daycare. It's not just fun and games. It's not just teaching them to be good moral people. It's not just telling them Bible stories. We want them 
to understand the gospel and come to a personal relationship with Jesus as their saviour and then their king. Will you teach the gospel this Sunday with your children?